Imran, nice to, so meet you. nice to meet you. I've seen some of your stuff on YouTube, sure, right? Sure, sure, um, I like your style, man. So your name, sorry? It's a Jagrad Singh. Jagrad Singh, okay, very yeah. nice to meet you, man. So um, the reason I wanted to obviously, you know, talk to you and thank you for stopping and giving us your time is because, as we said that, you know, if, we, if we're straight to the point, yeah, yeah, yeah. culturally between subcontinental Muslims and yeah. Sikhs, there is a conflict, right? Okay, fair Cultural, enough. Yeah, culturally, culturally, right? I'm not saying that it's a religious conflict. I don't think that you guys hate us. No. And nor, do, nor does our religion teach us to hate you guys, right? Yeah, yeah. But because of things that have happened in terms of the historical content, context, I think it's, it's bubbled down. It's, 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 you know, there's, there's some underlying issues, right? Sure. And I think part of it from the Muslims' perspective is that we don't actually understand Sikhs, right? And when I was looking into the history of it, I saw to some extent there was like a lot of strong relationships. For example, I think it was the sixth guru that built a mosque, right? Yeah, yeah, Something yeah. like that. So exactly. like, when, when we as Muslims hear things like this, how can we not look over and think, well, you know what? There's some nice people there that did bring us benefits, yeah. right? So I thought the purpose of this from my perspective and our perspective would be to basically you explain some of the things and the relationships that the, that, that the Sikhs and the Muslims had that were perhaps more positive as opposed to the more negative ones that we know. Yeah, yeah, sure, right? man, absolutely. That's, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we, as a, as a channel or as a movement or whatever it is, Sikhi, we, we're trying to spread the message of um, the oneness of the divine. Uh -huh. And also that our message is, our message is that Guru said to connect, not to spend their life not connecting. Because a lot of people, I think, nowadays in the modern world, they have this idea that religion is about believing in God. Yeah. The thing is, and, 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 and normally it tends to be when they believe in God, they tend to also say, well, my God is better than your God. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. our religion is better than your religion. Uh -huh. But what we're trying to say is, look, that the, the, the divine one, God doesn't really care about religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What he cares about, though, is that we connect. So in effect, our first guru, when they came here upon the earth, they were sent. They were sent by the divine, yeah? Uh -huh. We don't see that because a lot of people sometimes now, um, this is no criticism of Muslims because probably the Sikhs haven't spread that message. Yeah. But the thing is, people start thinking that Sikhism is man-made yeah. because they think, oh, well, Gunan Devji made the religion. Uh -huh. But Gunan Devji, if you asked him yeah. who made the religion, they would say, look, I was sent upon this earth by the one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And I was given a mission, uh -huh. right, to spread the message of the truth uh -huh. of the Shabbat. Uh -huh. So where they went out, they went and spread out and singing the word. Yeah. So for us, it is revelation. Yeah. So that's a big important thing that I think that the Muslim community might want to know. Okay. That as far as Sikhism is concerned, it's right. divinely ordained yeah. and it's revelation that Guruji is speaking. The words of Gunan Devji for us are not just the words of Gunan Devji, they're the words of God spoken through him. Okay. And in fact, he says it in his Bani, he says, Jaise mein aave, jaise mein aave kasam ki bani, okay. kari gyan yeah. He says, oh Lalo, as the Bani of God comes to me, so I speak out. Yeah. So the message is very simple. There's one creator, yeah. Yeah, he made all of us, uh -huh. and that one's light is inside all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doesn't matter if you're Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, whether you're male or female, whether you're gay or straight, uh -huh. the divine light is inside everybody. Yeah. And the purpose of the human life is like the most valuable thing you could ever have in your life, just the human life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, animals, every, everything in this world thirsts for this one chance to be a human. Yeah. And the point of the human life is that we should connect to the one. Okay. It's not that we spend our life believing in God, yeah. But that we should, A, obviously we've got to be a good person, right. but that we should connect. And that we believe like at the hair, top of the head, uh -huh. there's like a divine spot. Okay. Let's call it the Godhead. Yeah? Is that where it's covered? Yeah, it's oh, covered. Okay. And it's, in fact, many religions cover it. Yeah. It's exactly where the Yamoka will sit on top of the Jews' head as yeah. well. Yeah? Yeah. It is actually a divine spot. And what we believe in, that you can connect to the one and you can experience the one. Yeah. Yeah? And that, that experience is what we are seek, seeks to recreate uh -huh. and then create so much that it becomes part of your normal routine. That, you spend your whole day yeah. in the awareness of God. Okay. Now you can call him Allah, yeah. you can call him, you know, Jesus, whatever you want. The point is though, that it's the connection that we seek. Okay, so just, just, just so I understand, are you saying that there's no, and I'm, I'm going to phrase it in a different way, yeah, but yeah. let me know if I understood it right, yeah. that there's no point believing in God if you don't have a relationship with him. So you yeah, guys exactly. put an emphasis on having a relationship yeah, with exactly. God. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, fantastic. Because so belief, is, belief is kind of like, um, belief is kind of like having a long-term girlfriend, long-distance relationship. Yeah. Now, what's better than long distance relationship is, is a, a, a next, yeah, it's yeah. a close relationship, yeah, yeah? yeah? So many people have a long distance relationship with you, I believe in you, God, yeah. and, but they don't bring God here. Right, so right. for us, God is inside, right, yeah? Right, and right. the point of human life is to experience that divine inside us. Okay. Yeah, it's like the mind is like a temple, yeah. Okay, fantastic, and thank you for the explanation. But there's just one question I have, right? Yeah, go ahead. And uh, I hope it's not like offensive or anything, but I don't mean to offend, but you know, like there are some Muslims and even I was taught this by some elders when I was young and they had this belief that 
Christianity, oh, sorry, not Christianity, Sikhism comes from Islam. And even once I heard that someone said that Guru Nanak was, uh, was a Muslim, right? And I don't know anything about that. I've not really seen any evidence. But when I do speak to Sikh people about yeah. their religion, I find that they are quite a lot of similarities, right? Yeah, I just wonder where they come from. A lot of similarities. I was talking yeah. to, the, to this brother here, who he was mentioning that, you know, one of, one, of, one of the things about the Sikh martial art is that, you know, you learn archery, horse riding, sword fighting. And these are exactly the same things. And I'm not saying you copied, but I'm not trying to imply that at all. But I'm just wondering where the similarity comes from. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, like, he heavily encouraged to, you know, learn how to do archery, sword fighting, yeah. and, and horse riding. Interesting. Answering, Interesting, right? yeah. Yeah, so. Things like that, like how? Okay, how it's come? interesting. And, and, quite and, sorry, sorry, and also I believe, like in the in the Guru Granth Sahib, um, yeah. have I pronounced it right? Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it, it mentions words like Ar Rahman, yeah, and Rab, yeah, like Arabic terms, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So how come there's that? Okay, look, the the thing is that many people misunderstand uh -huh. when it comes to Sikhi that there's there is a lot of similarity. Yeah, the reason the similarity is there is because the truth is the same. Yeah, wherever you go in the world, the yeah. truth is the same. Yeah. So. There is only one creator, yeah. yeah, and the human being is meant to connect, uh -huh. and so the God is very compassionate. Yeah. God is giving. Yeah. So the Guru Sahib, when he travelled, yeah. he used the words that were the truth. Yeah. Now, whether now obviously Islam has a lot of truth within it. Yeah. Sikhs aren't going out saying that Islam is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. What he's saying is that the Gurus took, uh, not took. That's the wrong word because the truth is there, and yeah. Guru's words were divine. But they collected. That, but that no, oh. because the thing is, this conception is wrong. He didn't collect anything. It wasn't like Guruji stood, stood up one day and said, Oh, I want to make a new religion. I'm going to take a little bit of Islam, yeah. a little bit of Hinduism and voila, we have a new religion. Let's yeah. call it Guru Nanak's religion. Yeah. It wasn't like that. Yeah. The truth is the truth. Yeah. Now, whether there, there, there is some, there is truth in Islam. Yeah. There's a lot of truth in Islam. Yeah. So where you see that truth reflecting in, in Sikhi, yeah. that's because it is the truth. Okay. Yeah? And so the Gurus weren't afraid of saying, look, this is the true way. Yeah. In the same way, Actually, the very first words of Guru Dev Ji might be interesting yeah. to you. Okay. When he when he was uh, made the Guru by God, mm -hmm. the very first thing he says, "Na koi Hindu, na Muslim." Okay. What that means? There is no Hindu. There is no Hindu. There is no, there is no Muslim. Okay. So what is there? Just just one. People. Okay. The six billion people. Obviously, back then there was a lot less. Yeah. Okay. But there's just people. Yeah. And there's God. Yeah. So in fact, religion itself yeah. is just a document or, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's a theory. Yeah. What real? What's really there is people. Okay. And it doesn't matter to God. Like yeah. if you're a Muslim and I'm a Sikh, we're not going to get judged yeah. upon what we believed. Yeah. We're going to get judged upon our deeds. Okay. Yeah. How we thought. Yeah. How we how we spoke. Yeah. How we acted. Uh -huh. These are the things that are going to judge us. So everybody's going to get judged, uh -huh. but it's not going to be judged upon what you believe. It's going to be upon the actual okay. actions. You so see what I mean? Is, and, and, and so, Guru. So when yeah. you say the similarity, so to answer the question, because yeah. yeah. the similarities exist because the truth is common. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't mean Sikhi would never say that Guru Sahib ever took anything from other religion. Yeah. Okay. It's just because it's there. It's just it's, that it's there. Yeah. The Tawheed. Yeah. We believe in the Tawheed, the oneness of God. Yeah. But we don't believe that God is separate from the world. Right. We believe God is imminent, everywhere, and separate. Okay. It's hard to get your head around it. Do you, do you, you know what I mean? Do you, okay. So here's. Do you believe that, like, we are a part of God, like physically? Yeah. Yeah. Physically. Yeah, we believe, yeah, that yeah. the divine is everywhere, yeah. inside everything. Uh -huh. So yeah, God is all around us, okay. and there's, there's only God. Uh -huh. Mara, Mara says, uh, he says, there's nothing but God. Sab Gobind hai, sab Gobind hai, Gobind bin nahi koi. There's nothing but God. Uh -huh. So God is inside us, all around us, everywhere. So how do you define God? Because that's interesting, right? Yeah. Because, um, and I'm not trying to turn this into a debate, but no, it's no, just no. for me to get a better understanding. And I'm sure, you know, obviously, our, our, our belief is, is quite opposite to that, right? Like, we believe that... God is very different to his creation, right? For example, there's a verse in the Quran which basically says that there is nothing like unto him, meaning we can't compare anything to his magnificence, his majesty, his greatness. I agree with you, brother. Right? I totally agree but, with you. And for that reason, we say that this is a creation of God, a yeah. product of God's magnificence, but not a part of God, right? I mean... No, no, I, what I said is yeah. that God is nothing like anything we ever think. It's nothing yeah. like God. There's nothing like God yeah. in the whole world. Yeah. However, this is a this this is inside he's inside every single thing. He sustains it. But do you mean he's inside it literally? Because in the Quran, for example, it says Actually, that we would say that we are inside God. Yeah. We wouldn't say that God is in the world. We would say that everything is like an is like an ex, is like a it's like a um, it's like an illusion. Okay. The world isn't real. Okay. It's just God is created it. Yeah. But then it's gonna go back to God. There's nothing there. Okay. So and. Like when, when, when we have a belief, right? Yeah. We base our belief on the Quran, yeah. which we believe to be the, div the divinely inspired word of our creator. Right. And, and for that reason, yeah. we're like, okay, it's credible. You see what I'm saying? Because we believe it's from God. 
Um, when you, this belief that you had, that you have, like, like, where do you derive it from? Because of course, like me as someone who's a sincere seeker of truth, right? I have to ask myself, where did it come from? Like, who said it, right? Mm -hmm. So is this something that you're saying God himself said? And if so, like, how do you know God actually said that? Okay. Because, I, you know, you mentioned that Islam has, has some truth in it and that truth is evident in Sikhism, right? But then you also said that God doesn't really care about religion. And I don't like to use the word religion. In Islam, there's no such word as religion. I mean, Islam is not religion. It's, it's a deen, which means way of life, right? Yeah. It's a way of life. Um, but your question is, how do we know that the Bani is coming from God? And how do we know that we can believe in it? Well, right. Bani, you mean revelation? But we mean the words the Guru said, yeah? Okay. Guru wrote stuff in right. revelation, but okay. they wrote it in poetry. Okay. Now, uh, a good quote, let's say, for example, we must say, how do you get it from? <coughs> what the Guru say? Yeah. The Guru said this quite specifically. Guru Ram Dash, our fourth Guru, says very specifically yeah. that the O Sikhs accept my word as the truth upon the truth. Yeah. God Himself is making me say it. Yeah. How, what could be, what could be more clear? Well, He's saying in it that He's saying, so we believe in our Guru. Yeah. Yeah? In the same way, like, you, know, you would believe in it because Prophet Muhammad said so. Actually, but that's also, not true. Well, you the Quran, it, 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 it gives us a falsification test because we, we, the, the way we see it is that out of God's mercy, even though it is God speaking, we should just accept. We, we, we appreciate that God appreciates our weakness as human beings and sometimes we need reassurance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So God in, for example, chapter 2 of the Quran, He says, if you are in doubt about this revelation that we have sent down upon our servants, mm -hmm. then produce one chapter like it, right? So, I mean, from yeah, this... Yeah, I've, I've seen that before. I watched quite right? a lot of videos by the, by the, the street Dawah guy, yeah? Um, what's his name? Um, Dawah is easy. That was easy, yeah, okay, yeah. Fazal Rahman. Okay, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a good guy. I yeah, he's, I a good guy he's a good guy. I have a, uh, but, but, but I'll answer just, that just, question just, just because you answered the question. Right. I, wanna, I just, go I, back just to I just wanted to explain, like, from our perspective. Yeah, right? I know, I know what you're going to say that, 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 that no one has been able to produce anything like that in. But in, I wanted to make it more tangible for you. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, because you mentioned that obviously the Guru Granth Sahib, right? Yeah, yeah. It's written in poetry. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a very eloquent text, I presume. It's very eloquent and powerful, right? It's amazing, yeah. Okay, now the Quran is also. We don't call it poetry, but it's written in some sort of a rhythmic form, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, when, you, when it comes to speech or liter literature, right? The, the two main criteria for any literature to be fantastic is the content of what's being said and the style in which it's being delivered. So from what I gather from you, the Guru Granth Sahib has that because it's got you know, powerful messages and lessons in there and it's, it's, it's sung, right? It's, yeah. it's poetry. So it must be delivered in a very beautiful way, right? Now with the Quran, we have this also, right? Or that's our claim so far, right? But well, I've heard the, way, it. the yeah. way we differentiate whether it's from God or not, whether it's from Allah, our creator or not, is to see can any, because the Quran says, can a human being do this? So I just want to give you a tangible example, because sometimes when you say the Quran cannot be created by a human being, you might think to yourself, well, what, what does that mean? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't speak Arabic, what does that mean to me? So to give you a tangible explanation, like, you know if you write a verse in a song, right? You know what a rhetorical device is, right? A rhetorical feature, like a metaphor, simile, yeah, yeah, yeah. something else. Awesome. Right. In about 16 verses, how many rhetorical devices do you think a really powerful song could have, like by the best musician? Because I believe the gurus were, were they, they, they were, they were, they were musicians, they were amazing right? poets, okay, so, fight, uh, right, you know, everything. Okay, so, so someone of that calibre, right? If that's, your, if, that's, if that's the benchmark. In about 16 lines, if they were writing, because this is coming from God, if they were writing the best script, the best poetry, the best kind of song, right? How many rhetorical devices do you think they could include? It's an interesting question because you know um, in the morning we do a, a, a part by Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj okay. called Jab Sahib. It's one of the daily prayers. Okay. Okay. And it's just, uh, it's an amazing <coughs> prayer to read. Yeah. And in that Guru Gobind Singh Ji does an amazing thing. Okay. They blend both Arabic words really? and Sanskrit words and really? and all these amazing verses okay. and they actually write stuff that would make sense to both a Muslim and a Hindu. Okay. And in in one it's 199 verses. Okay. And it's profound. Okay. It goes on for about 10 minutes and you say so many names for God. They describe God in so many amazing ways. It's pure praise. Okay. So I would say that I know what you're saying. You're saying, look, uh, but what I would say is for a Sikh, yeah. when they look at Gurbani, yeah. Yeah, the, is, test, sorry, Gurbani? The, the Guru's words, yeah? Okay, yeah. the test of the Gurbani is not just, it's not proven just by the fact that Guru Sahib wrote it. Yeah. It's by the experience we can have from it. Okay. Gurbani is something very unique. Yeah. It's not just showing us the way to God. Yeah. It is the way to God. Uh -huh. Guru is saying, look, sing these words. Yeah. In this style, of, it's divided by rag. Yeah. When we sing it, we can experience it. And my myself, yeah. the, only, the way that I know my Guru is true, because yeah. what he says, yeah came true. Yeah. He said to me, at the top of my head, I've got Dasmandwar. Yeah. He said to me, if you sing these words, you yeah. will feel bliss and you will feel love and you will cry for God. Uh -huh. 
and I did, and it happened. So the fact is, Guru Sahib, just in their, just by what they said, yeah. it works. Yeah. So my proof for me is that Sikhi works. Secondly, yeah. just what they did, look at their lives. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing, obviously, you, you know, I'm a Sikh, so I believe yeah. in my Gurus. Yeah. But I don't believe there's anybody in this world that compares to my 10 Gurus. Uh -huh. yeah? And look at the examples they did, like you said earlier, that the sixth Guru actually made a mosque. Yeah. But his father was killed by Muslim fundamentalists. Yeah. Where in this world has a son yeah. of somebody who was killed yeah. by Muslim fundamentalists then turned around and said, I do not bear a grudge against this religion, yeah. and the people need a mosque, yeah. and we will build it. And the principle there was, we don't care about religion, we care about that people yeah. should be allowed to worship God yeah. in every way they want. Yeah. So they gave a mosque to these people. Now, this wasn't, this wasn't just a normal Sikh doing it. It was the Guru himself, the head of a faith. Yeah. That's never happened before. But the examples are so amazing, like right. the ninth Guru. Yeah. Just what the ninth Guru did could blow you away. And he's ninth after eight so other he Gurus. He was persecuted for protecting the Hindus, I believe. Right? He was actually beheaded yeah. in Delhi yeah. by Islamic fundamentalists yeah. because he wanted to save the Hindus from being converted to Islam. We could have stepped away, we could have yeah. said, hey, it's nothing to do with us, the yeah. Muslims want to convert the Hindus, what's it got to do with us? Uh -huh. But here the Guru steps in, yeah. and for the principle of freedom of religion, yeah. Guru Sahib is beheaded in Delhi, yeah. next to the Lal Kila, the Red Fort. Mm -hmm. This is an unprecedented example. Yeah. It's not just a Sikh, it's the Guru himself. The thing is, sir, and, 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 and undoubtedly, right, when I hear about these things, my heart can't help but have respect for these individuals, right? And I give, I give them that, right, respectfully, I do. But then, what you said about the way you know your scripture is correct is because of what you experience. That's not the only way, but okay, that's but the way I would, that's what... But, but, but that's pretty subjective because like when we pray, for example, when we stand up in the third part of the night, which is like the most romantic time when everyone's asleep and you get up of your bed, you get up of your wife that you're sleeping next to, you rip those sheets off of you, you make, you know, you ablution in the cold water and you stand and you recite the words of God. We shed tears throughout the whole time as well. Chantica. But the thing is that that, that that necessarily doesn't mean to you that Islam is correct. You see what I'm saying? Like I walk around. No, on, it, it, on you're, you're wrong. You're wrong. See, does it mean that Islam is false <coughs> either? Yeah. What it means is yeah. that it works. So what yeah. Guru has never said is yeah. said never said look, that they criticize the yeah. Quran itself. Yeah. What they said though is yeah. is that the person who prays yeah. with a true heart yeah. Yeah, and yeah. worships the divine yeah. will feel the love. Yeah. And that is true, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what's happening right. to the person who wakes up in the morning, whether they're sick or Muslim, yeah. they're feeling it. Right. So that what Guru Sahib is saying yeah. is true. Yeah. But the thing, thing is, pe people experience this thing whilst they do completely opposite things. And some things, some religions actually because encourage there is no religion. Are, immoral, are, are immoral. Yeah, people feel these same things through these certain practices. Like what? For example, you have the uh, traditional practices of the Christians, according to the Bible, if your wife, uh, you know, in, in, I think it's in the book of Deuteronomy, if she saves you from a thief that comes in the house, you're allowed to chop her hand off. You see what I'm saying? And they do these things thinking that they're actually preaching the word of God. No, 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 but, right? oh, but that's, do you think doing the act of them chopping their wife's hand off, they're in divine bliss? Say that again? Do you well, think? You, well, of course, because they think I've just done a good deed, right? Like any, any, as, as a person who follows a religion, any actual act, act you do, right? You feel like, you feel a sense of like, I'm doing what God told no, me bro, to bro, do, bro. We, right? We, we, didn't, we didn't talk about feeling good. Yeah. We talked about the divine experience. Right. Okay. We're talking about two different okay, okay, things. Well, One well, is grace. Yeah. That Come when on. you have that experience of the divine, that yeah. is pure grace. God is blessing you because God is happy uh -huh. with your actions. Okay. You don't get that from doing crazy stuff. Guru Sahib said very clearly. No, do. but people have a some people have a, a, a sort of inner belief. They don't have that experience. I've met people that have had the experience, bro. Yeah. They become very soft of heart. But, 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 they become very compassionate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what the religion. What yeah. that's what a true experience of the divine does yeah. to you. It makes you very compassionate, very loving. Yeah. And those people, they don't become compassionate, and loving. That yeah. means that they're not having that experience. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Mara says very clearly. Um, yeah. Homme, which is the ego yeah. and the sense of separateness, yeah. is opposed to the experience of God. Mm -hmm. You can't have both at the same time. You yeah. can't be acting out of ego yeah. and then yet still be connected to God. Yeah. It doesn't work. So yeah. the, because some people misconceive what it means to connect to God, yeah. they feel that them feeling happy, yeah. them feeling very exalted, yeah. that means that they're connected to God. It doesn't. Yeah. The experience is very unique. Yeah. The experience yeah, is your head. At the top of your head, when you feel that divine bliss, yeah. there's nothing like it. Yeah. That's why you can't even explain to someone. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like it in the world. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't had that, when your whole body is tingling with divine love, then you're missing out. So, firstly, that's one thing. But the other reason is that what a Sikh would say is, look, no one has done what my gurus have done. Yeah. The gurus, for us, a Sikh, yeah. don't need... But just read the Guru's lives. For a Sikh, the Guru just falls at the Guru's feet and says, I'll, I'll do whatever you say. Yeah. Because the Gurus were so amazing. Yeah. 
Then the Bani works, yeah. the meditation works, yeah. and the truth they say actually applies in the world. Yeah. You can see for yourself, it's self-evident that people yeah. are equal, yeah. and yet the world was dividing them up. Yeah. So the Gurus created Langar, yeah. which is much better than just saying to everybody you're equal, yeah. create food that people yeah. can sit equally. Yeah. So for me, like there's a video on our channel called Why is Guru Perfect? Because okay. you asked this question, how do we know he's right? Yeah? Yeah. Why is Guru Perfect? Because yeah. for me, it's not just the quality of the message. Yeah. It's not just the fact that the message works, yeah. but the fact that the tools they gave us to save the world yeah. actually work. Yeah. Everything they gave us okay, just but, works. But it's just like, here's the thing, sir. You for see, me, Sikhi just works. Is, right? like, the reason I want to come back to what I was saying about... So, one second, where's Oyen? Is... Uh, You're not recording? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I sorry. thought he left me, man. I was thinking... Oh, <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want you to think I've cut the images or no, anything no, no, like no. that. Okay, look, the thing is, the re I want to come back to the Quran because I want to just finish off the point I was making. Before I do that, like, I could, I could sit here and quote yeah. to you about the fantastic things that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did. And believe me, if I told you, you would also think to yourself, wow, and there's, this is why this man, by secular individuals, actually Christian individuals like Michael A. Hart, who wrote The Most Influential Men in the World, he put Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the first man, right? Because of all the things that they did for humanity and mankind. Salahuddin Ayyubi, uh, may Allah have mercy on him, who was the man who fought off the Crusaders in Jerusalem. These Crusaders came and they crucified Muslims. In within, within a matter of two days, 70,000 women, children, old men, women, kids, they skewered them and literally roasted them like you roast a Sikhi kebab or something like that, right? That's but horrible. Uh, pardon? That's horrible. Exactly, but at the end, what did he do? He took them in, he took care of these Christians and the Jews, right? To the extent where when Muslims ruled in Andalusia and Spain for 800 years, the Christians and the Jews were the, were, the, were the majority, the Muslims were the minority, but they welcomed the Muslims. They said, come and save us from our oppressors, right? So that's not even the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But if I told you all these things, I could tell you he's fantastic, but then all it would be is just basically a discussion, and it's a very beneficial discussion, about the attributes of these great men. And undoubtedly, one of the proofs of our religion is also the perfection of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because the Quran testifies and says that he had the that's greatest of characters. Islamic. That's but, obviously but, but, Islamic viewpoint. Right, exactly, exactly. That's the point. That's a subjective viewpoint. But what I wanted to share with you is something objective that you don't necessarily have to say you have to experience this or you have to read these books. Something that I can share with you now and with the rational mind, which we call the Aql, the rational mind which your creator, uh, which my creator, our creator gave to us, we can assess, right? And then you be the judge. That's what I'm trying to say. So coming back to but the- How can it, if, if, it's, if it's rational, you yeah. can't be, you be the judge. Well, let me share it. You know what I mean? It, either it has to be self-evident <coughs> and therefore I don't need to judge it because right. it's just blatantly okay, so it's or, or else okay. it's not self-evident and it has to be a judgment and then therefore it becomes subjective again. Okay, okay. okay, okay Agreed. So okay, no, I agree. Thank yeah. you for clearing that. Right. It will be self-evident, right? And if you find that it's not self-evident, then there is a deficiency in what I'm saying, right? So the point that I was making was, I asked you, I said, how many rhetorical devices could the greatest literature have? Now you mentioned it's a hundred. That's, that's a very subjective opinion because Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. No, rhetor rhetorical devices are objective because if I, if I, for example, when I did English. But you said the greatest mind. Not, okay, no, how, no. how can we? How can I, I, I judge I, I, here, I, sitting me and you? How do we know what the greatest mind could come up with? But what I'm saying is that obviously you you feel that that, that the guru right yeah. is this, the, receiving divine revelation. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously 100%. what he has to say is better literature than anyone else. Yeah, I, that's for right. me personally. Okay, I would exactly, agree. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But so, Mara so, says that the the. Uh, Bani of Guru yeah. is Bani Asir Bani. Yeah. Sadhguru Ki Bani is the highest Bani of all Bani. So whether, you know, for a Sikh point of yeah. view, the Quran may have a lot of truth within it, but it doesn't top Guru so, Granth Sahib. So I'm talking from your point of view, right? Yeah. Say, say you have like 16 verses yeah. of what the Guru spoke. Like how many rhetorical devices do you think you, he could include? Now you mentioned in 120 verses, he's got this fantastic combination of Sanskrit and, and Arabic, which sounds very impressive, right? Yeah. But like, Say, 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 you could, say you could pick like, I don't know, a paragraph, yeah? How many could you pinpoint? Just, just give me a number on average. How many words in a sentence? No, no, no. In, well, what I'm saying is from, from your text, like what you read. Yeah, no, but how many words okay, in, in a sentence? In, in your 120, in your 120 verse prayer that you read. The 199, yeah, 199 that one. Job type, yeah? Right. In the first 10, in the first 10, how many rhetorical devices are in there? Nearly every word. Nearly every word. Is a different... Okay, so, Nearly every word. Okay, so, so how many words would there be in like the first verse? But bro, the thing is, you know what you don't understand about verses, yeah? This is a point of, that I want to no, 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 but I'll get to you, but the point, the, the length of a verse yeah. is determined by the beat of that verse. Right. So if it's a short verse yeah, yeah. or a long verse. Yeah, I get it. Now, I get it. So, so it depends, that's why I asked you, how, what's the length of the sentence? Right. But anyway, carry on, you so make your right, point. What I'm saying is, you, the you, you know what the first 10 are, you know what the length uh, Yeah, I know it, I know it, yeah. So how, how many rhetorical devices are I in those first 10? It depends on the length of the sentence. 
Okay. I'm not ready to you. Give okay. me the, give so, me a sentence. I'm saying you know the, you I know many words. I'm saying you, you know the language. Okay, bro, just, just make your point because we're not, we're not gonna. Cause the thing is, no, no, I'll no. try to sentence. I haven't every, explained properly. Every sentence yeah. or every verse yeah. is different depending right. upon how long so it that's is. That's what I'm saying. The first ten, which you already know. Yeah, but how long are they? Because there's loads. They're different lengths. The first ten. They're the diff first they're of different lengths. The hundred ninety nine yeah. are not of uniform. A length. I know, but I'm saying the first 10 of those 199. Okay, fine. That's the first 10. Yeah, go right, on. The first 10. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Sorry, I, I should have said first. That's what I was okay. trying to say. I apologize. Yeah. The first 10 of those 199, how many rhetorical devices would you say are in those first 10? Nearly every word is different, bro. Okay, and how Nearly many Nearly every word is giving you an example of the, of the creator. Okay, so roughly how many words would you say are in those first 10? Bro, this is hard for you to say. Go, just make your point. Go, okay. Go on. Okay. So okay. So say there's ten words. Let's say, say let's say the Guru Granth Sahib just got fourteen hundred and thirty youngs. Okay. Guru Gobind is written beyond more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the, the amount of the amount, I mean, I could give you some lines yeah. right now you could read yeah. and Guru Gobind Singh will blow anybody's yeah. mind. Okay. So that's why I okay, believe. Okay. So here, but here, here, you tell me that okay, what so the objective the version is going. Okay, I'll tell you the objective. So you're saying that every word, right? Yeah, nearly, and that's very yeah, impressive. Yeah. So say there's 10 words. Yeah. Those 10 words, each single one of those words would exactly. be a rhetorical device. Exactly. And that's profound, right? Yeah, and profound. that's not easy to do. Yeah. And that is something that definitely is very impressive. And, and, right? and multilingual, bro. And multilingual. Yeah. Undoubtedly, that is very impressive, right? But now let's apply the same criteria to the Quran. The Quran said that if you're in doubt about what we have revealed upon our servant, yeah. produce even a chapter like it. The smallest chapter is only 10 words. Right. The smallest chapter. And this is not me trying to debate with you, bro. Yeah, yeah. This is not me trying to like, uh, like you know, like, uh, so I'm, not, I'm trying to convert so the ayah, you. Right? You're talking about the ayah, yeah? No, no, no there, there's three ayah. And the three ayat are 10 words, yeah? Okay. This is just me being sincere, just sharing something with you that I think you So how many are in there? T take a guess. What? In 10 words. In 10 words? In 10 words, how many rhetorical devices are in those 10 words? Take a guess. 20? That would be impressive though, right? But how many are there? 40. 40. Yeah, I mean... And this is not subjective. This is... The Arabic language has been preserved and you can go into the language... Bro, you can't judge something by rhetorical devices. No, but let me tell you why I can. Right? You can't. Let me, tell you why <laughs> go I can. let me tell you why I can. Because a miracle... A miracle... Just hear me out for a second. A miracle by definition is something that is outside the capacity of human beings or nature. For example, if I point my finger at the moon and the moon splits, that's a miracle because there's no connection between my finger and the moon, right? So here Allah is trying to say that this Quran is outside the capacity of human beings. It's a miracle because it can only be from Bro, me. Bro, uh, right? let, me, let me correct so you on that. I, I got your point. Go on. Let me just conclude, right? So Allah is saying that this is outside the capacity of human beings. No human being can mess with this, right? And the way to test it is go and do it. It either came from God or from the Prophet Muhammad, okay. peace upon him. So test it. And here, the smallest sample is only 10 words. And within those 10 words, there are 40 rhetorical devices. So as a human being who doubts the Quran being from God, would have to either show how a human being could, could include 40 rhetorical devices in 10 words, or they would then have to also try and do it themselves. But that's not it. It's not just the Quran has 40 rhetorical devices in those 10 words. But usually, like, you know when you rap, I used to be a rapper, yeah, in, in, in my past days, yeah. You, you want to put like metaphors and similes and whatever, but you have to compromise what you're trying to say. For example, to make sure you, the line fits in with the rhyme, you have to take certain words out and the message is compromised. So that's why I said the mean, the content and the style both have to be ex extremely can, can I, Okay, so I got it. The, I got the, it. the last I got sentence, it. last sentence, okay. the Quran is not only fantastic in terms of it has 40 rhetorical devices, but the words used have not compromised the meaning in any way. And the words used are the best words that could have been possibly used to make those points. Okay. Right. So you as a human being, rationally have to let, say, let me give you my response that. as please, a Sikh. Yeah? If a Sikh would say, okay, so the Muslim is saying that there's nothing like the Quran from what they've read is just so amazing, it blows their mind. Yeah. The Sikh would say exactly the same thing, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you could forget the rhetorical devices, the beauty of it. Yeah, somebody who reads Sukhmani Saib yeah. is like just knocked out by how yeah. amazing it is. Yeah. For one hour, yeah. Guru Arjan Dev Ji uses rhyming couplets, yeah. one hour's prayer, bro, yeah. and all of it rhymes, yeah. and all of it is sublime truth, one better than the other, and the better yeah. than the other, better than the other, yeah. just until your mind is yeah. in divine bliss. Yeah, yeah? yeah. that's just Sukhmani Saib. Imagine we've got 1430 youngs. Yeah. Guru Gobind Singh Yaqal Ustad, yeah? Jab Sahib, yeah. Jab Ji Sahib. Yeah. Yeah, the, the prayers are so profound, so divine. When we, when we at South of Park Avenue Gurdwara, every Sunday we do Katha. Yeah. Katha means explanation of the Bani. Uh -huh. Do you know Jab Ji Sahib, uh, the first prayer of the, of the Guru Nanak Dejima, the one that Guru Gan Sahib opens with? This is the 199. Prayer. No, no, no. Okay. This is Jab Ji, the very first prayer. The second <laughs> prayer is Jab Sahib. Jab Ji Sahib, it's 30, it's got 40, um, 40 verses, yeah. you might say, yeah, 40 uh, Poriyan. Okay. Yeah? Okay. The uh, Mool Mantar, 
38 bodies and then a slug at the end. Okay. It took us 40 hours, bro. Yeah. More than to yeah. just go through it yeah. bit by bit. Okay. And that even that was an injustice to it, yeah. how deep it was. Yeah. We were having to do sometimes two verses, yeah. one verse in two hours, because yeah. it was so deep. Yeah. Every line was blowing our yeah. mind, yeah? So the depth of Barney and how amazing yeah. it is, is just profound. And also, just to give you a bit about what yeah. you might say, you know, the Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Funnily enough, Guru Gobind Singh Ji wrote a letter to Aurangzeb. Yeah. Have you heard of Aurangzeb? The emperor, yeah. uh, the king, the Mughal yeah. king. Yeah. The Mughal king, yeah? yeah? And he was actually, you know, quite a tyrant. Yeah. Islamic yeah. tyrant in a way, yeah? yeah. And um, was he, he was the one who built Taj Mahal, right? No, that, that was Shah Jahan. That yeah? was Shah Jahan. That yeah? was Shah Jahan. So, um, Aurangzeb was like, uh, is uh, anyway, Aurangzeb was a bit of a tyrant. Mm. He killed the younger sons of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. He had them ordered to be killed, and they were only seven and nine years old. Yeah. So Guru Gobind Singh writes a letter to them. Yeah. That's a letter to him, yeah? yeah. And in that letter, they start off by using words that are very Islamic. Okay. You should read that yeah. because I would say that Guru Gobind Singh just proved that bit wrong. What you just said, yeah. to prove that you can write anything equivalent to it, yeah. just read the Zafarnama. The very first part of Zafarnama, yeah. which is written yeah. in Quranic Arabic, you yeah. might say, or yeah. Persian, yeah. it just blows your mind. Really and that's Guru Gobind Singh writing in a language right. that's not even his, he's writing right. for so Sikhs, he's writing stuff in Farsi, yeah? uh -huh. using Arabic terms, yeah. and it's mind blowing. Okay. Yeah? And also, just another point, if you're saying about Bani, yeah. look at uh, Slok Malanova, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, yeah? Yeah. or just, there's just beyond Bani, yeah? uh -huh. that for a Sikh, yeah. you know, they, if you understood them, yeah. like a lot of people, like, for example, that are like me, yeah? Yeah. when we come into Sikhi, we come into it because we experience the Divine yeah. from Naam. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But when we're lucky, like I was lucky when I was 21, to get blessed to go to India mm -hmm. to learn Gurbani. Okay. So I went and learned how to read the scripture. Okay. And I can tell you one thing, it's a bit like Lauren Hill, you know, when she goes, you know, when she's singing that song, yeah? Killing me softly with his song, yeah? yeah. When, I, when I realized how beautiful the Barney was, yeah. it strengthened my faith. Yeah. No end. Because yeah. before that, I don't even know, but I bowed it, believed in it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But the benefit of learning the Barney, yeah. it blew my mind. It's way amazing. But you know, sir, and... And, and, and nothing and to like, me, like, nothing like, like it compares no, to the world. Like, nothing like, like it in said, the world. Like I said to you, sir, undoubtedly, right, I'm not denying that it must be fantastic. But what you explained, right, are things that our scholars have done. Not when, and, and, the, and our scholars, don't even do what the Quran does. Like I, I'm just going to give you an example. I don't want to focus on this too much because I wanted to. I want to go back to the Quran. But we have a scholar called Imam Al Hariri, right? Yeah. This man wrote an entire book. He wrote an entire book just you with every single word starting with the letter Sheen. Sheen is like you know how you pronounce Sha. It's like you know how you have the yeah. alphabet. It's a yeah. letter Sheen. Imagine an entire book, and he wrote every single word of that book, and it makes perfect sense. And it's so profound to the fact that we study it today, right? With, with that one letter. So, you know, our scholars have done these things. And we have, you know, many of the scholars who have written, you know, rhyming couplets, whatever. For example, Imam Shafi was one of the greatest Islamic poets. Right. And you read his stuff and you have the same thing. But the point is that when you read the Quran, I'm not talking about how the Quran touches you. It does. And that's a fact. I know, like I told you, but that's subjective, right? Yeah, subjective. But what I'm talking about is from an objective perspective, you can look at the Quran and you can see that no other scripture has been written in that way because it can't. And you have to ask yourself that how on earth does a Bedouin in the desert who doesn't even know how to read or write produce a text where just 10 words have 40 rhetorical devices? Just 10 words. Well, you have you to don't imply that he was stupid. Well, exactly. Just because he, stupid. Yeah. So no, 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 but, no, but the point is that I mean, there's a great eye guy. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a yeah. video. You, I'm sure you've seen it because you're an like, intelligent person. You're on YouTube. Uh -huh. You've seen that guy. What's his name? The rationalizer. The rationalizer. Yeah. 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 He made a very good video about the pro the fallacy of the idea that Prophet Muhammad was illiterate right. because not knowing how to read and write doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that you don't know how to speak. Right, or, or understand. Right, so right. obviously he not to speak, yeah? Right. You agree? Right. And he, he must have been intelligent, not yeah. saying he was stupid, yeah. right? Yeah. So therefore the point is somebody who's intelligent yeah. and can speak, yeah. like we're speaking now, the yeah. whole time we're speaking, we haven't yeah. written anything down, yeah. you might be illiterate. Right. But the fact is that you can speak intelligently. But, but, but that's not the point. My point is this, right? It's as follows. And the rationalizer is someone that I've engaged with on social media anyway, and he's a person that I'd love to meet one day. But I don't he, think he wants to meet any of you guys no, no, personally. He's, he's that's, not, his, that's, his, uh, that's his promise he made to his wife, isn't it? Really, is it? He's because not going to meet anybody. He seems to be stalking our, like for example, one of my teachers, Hamza Zutsis, on Twitter asking for oh, a debate. Just, like, uh, Hamza, yeah, he's stalking him for a debate, but he wants to do it online. Remember, that was the whole problem. Yeah. He wants to do it over Skype and Hamza said well, no. And he guys, had a big, man. he was crying like about you, it. Like you, that's why I respect you, you know, you come face to face. You pull out, you know. We've got nothing to hide, we've got nothing to be scared of, you know what I mean? I appreciate that. But coming back to what I was saying, right, that the Arabs at the time were the masters of the Arabic language. They themselves... And, and, and Prophet Muhammad was an Arab, agreed? He was an Arab, right? So then he must so, be the master of the Arabic what, language, no? Here's what I'm saying, right? That if it is a, a miracle by definition is something 
that is outside of the capacity of okay, human beings. I'll give you a question. But this, this, okay. This is Let, okay, you're talking capacity. about miracles, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a story about a miracle. Mm -hmm. This is not the first guru or the second guru or the third guru. Yeah. This is the seventh guru. Yeah. Sorry, the eighth guru. Okay. The eighth guru gets to meet somebody uh -huh. who is a very well-read pundit. You know yeah. what a pundit is? You say like Hindu, 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 yeah. Hindu priest, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the eighth guru is only. Uh, it was five when he became a guru, yeah. and he was eight when he left the guruship yeah. and left and actually passed away. And yeah. the jodh went on to the ninth guru. Yeah. yeah. So the eighth guru, Sri Guru Harkin Sahib Maharaj, yeah. is only seven, is five when they become guru. And uh, when they're about seven years old, they meet this pandit, yeah. pandit Lal Chand. His name was yeah. Okay. Pandit Lal Chand comes up to Guru Sahib because how can you be the throne of Guru Nanak? How can you, as a little child? have the same power of Guru Nanak. Guru Nanak is famous in India by yeah. time. It's been about nearly 200 years so Guru Nanak okay. Ji. Yeah? Okay. He goes, how can you be yeah. the one? You look at your child. Yeah. Guru Sahib said... This is about 300 years ago, yeah? This is about, yeah, over okay. 300 years ago now. Okay. Guru Sahib says, okay, as a young child, he goes, okay, Pandit Ji. He goes, Pandit Ji said, I want to test you. Mm -hmm. Explain to me the meaning of the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Bhagavad Gita is a very profound yeah. Hindu text written about Krishna, the yeah. worship. He goes, explain to me the meaning of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Now, here's a yeah. test. Yeah? Guru Sahib says, you know what, uh, Pandit Lal Chand? Not only I will explain it to you, just bring me anybody, anybody you want in the whole world, yeah. bring them up here and I will get that person to explain it to you. Yeah. Cool, isn't it? Pandit Lajan goes, I've got my opportunity here to embarrass the Guru. Yeah. He goes and finds a person who is completely unread. Yeah. Yeah? He's a water carrier. Yeah. He goes around, his only job is to give people water. Yeah. Do you think this guy is very bright? No. no. They, they picked him for that reason. He was dopey. Some people say he was even. He could, he could be though, the same. I'm way. not saying. I, I but Chaju was picked for that reason. He yeah. was picked. Chaju, he was. Some people say he was even mute. He yeah. couldn't even speak. Yeah. Yeah. So the, they brought him forward. Yeah. And Chaju, by the seventh guru, eighth guru, yeah. yeah. Chaju, Mara says to Chaju, Chaju, tell this man the meaning of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Chaju starts speaking the yeah. most profound truth. Yeah. Pandit Lal Chand, yeah. on that day when yeah. he heard, yeah. his mouth fell open and he realized that all these books he carried yeah. with him meant nothing. Yeah. That the divine truth could be told by anybody that yeah. was blessed by Guru. Mm -hmm. So our Gurus were for us were the divine manifestation, the light of the yeah. one. And they could do these things. It was Charles, it was Charles played yeah. in them. And they made this guy explain yeah. the Bhagavad Gita to Pandit. Pandit Lal Chand on yeah. that day became a Sikh. Yeah. Pandit Lal Chand became a Sikh of the 8th Guru, stayed a Sikh of the 9th Guru. And the 10th Guru as well, in 1699, Pandit Lal Chand became Pandit Lal Singh. When the Guru Gobind Singh he became an Amritari Sikh on that day, yeah. and then in seven in seventeen oh sixteen ninety nine later on when they in the seventeen oh five at this time Chamkor the Gadi the big the, the elder sahibs are they of the Guru Gobind Singh the elder sons when they died in that Shahidi yeah. Pandit Lal Singh yeah. was a Shahid then yeah. yeah so he died so this this example you're giving me about just one verse we've got countless examples of people yeah. who've seen Guru's grace. But and so they've showed the power of what they could do. Like no one in this world, I haven't heard of anybody who's prepared to be chopped this way. Yeah. You've heard about this guy in Delhi when Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji was, was uh, beheaded for saving Hinduism yeah. and saving the principal religion. At that time, three Sikhs died with him. Yeah. They were killed by the Muslim fundamentalists. One of them was chopped in half. Yeah. Here's an amazing thing. Yeah. You know what he said when they were going to chop him? He said, don't go fast. Go slowly. Who would say that? They're going to slice him in half. Yeah. He goes, go slowly. They go, why do you want to go slowly? Everybody wants a quick death. He goes, I want to do Japji Sahib. Yeah. I want to read the prayer of my Guru. Yeah. Do it slowly so I can finish it. Yeah. Guru Teg Bahadur Ji blessed him. Yeah. He said, don't worry about it. Your prayer will continue yeah. until it finishes. Yeah. From his dead body, in two pieces, yeah. the prayer kept on coming. Yeah. They kept on coming until it finished. Yeah. And then he left. Yeah. From his two pieces of body, yeah. part was coming out. Yeah. Bro, this is Charles played to us. But, but, but the is, this sir, 40 verses sir, thing, sir, the 40 sir, things you given sir, us, this is Charles played to the Guru. Sir, sir, guru Sahib can do it in his sleep. So respectfully, right? Like I, I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing no, 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 origin. The objective course, test you're giving me is nothing. No, no, but here, here's the thing, right? Like I could cite you many stories, right? Uh, that have actually ver been verified to be authentic via the, mean the science of authentic testimony, right? Of all sorts of incredible things, right? Yeah. That our scholars, these are not our gurus, by the way, right? These are just scholars. These are just people who just worship God and study the religion. Yeah. Things that they have done. And, 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 and you know how you said it's child play, it's child play for the gurus? Yeah. And I don't mean this as a disrespect. Please don't take it like that, right? But since we're on the topic, this is child play just for... Muslims in general. I mean, for example, Hudayfa radiallahu an, one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, when he stood before the Roman Emperor, he was about to burn him in boiling copper, I believe, right? 
He started crying and the Roman Emperor said, why are you crying? He said, only because I only have one life. I wish I had lives to come back again and do this all over and over and over and but over again. He does though, isn't it? Reincarnation is true. Again? Well, for you guys, right? <laughs> but, the, but, the point, but the point is that, I, you know, we can, we can, you know, describe many stories, right? right. But I, the point is that what you said, Bro, if it was true, so I said, so if it was true, if it was true, it would be impressive, but it's not verifiable. The Quran is verifiable. And maybe you haven't understood the objective test. The objective test is this. Create a scripture that someone else can create. No one else can create a scripture like the Quran. If I, if I tell you, Let for example, you no one in this world has created how, anything how, like Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Okay. So, so There's no scripture. Guru Granth Sahib Ji is the most unique thing in this world. No, undoubtedly. No one, no one ever made a scripture right. divided by music. But, but, no, but, that's, that, but the criteria Come by on. which you're judging is different. The criteria that I'm judging it is by what the, what the, the Quran dictates that you have to judge it according to how the Quran is. The Guru Granth Sahib is written in like you know music uh, in, in symphony kind of multiple languages right? but the in point, music but the point is that the Quranic challenge it supersedes that because it's saying you're focusing just on the style we're to and, and, and we're talking about the objective linguistic features of a language mm -hmm. right why is it that no one else can replicate that how do you and know they there? haven't because, well, have you read Guru Granth Sahib Ji? No, but here's the have thing. you read Jab Sahib? No, but what I I'm trying to say, what right, I'm trying to say is right. you're coming to but me the with this challenge, but, you, yeah. but, but, but listen, thing. listen, bro. Listen, listen. This is a kind of a silly question. challenge, so yeah? Kind of silly challenge, saying, yeah. Look, challenge saying, look, it's a very silly challenge because I have to say to you, it okay. is a silly challenge because to say to me yeah. that the Gurus, yeah. the only way the Gurus can be proven to you yeah. is if they go and write stuff in Quranic Arabic. Right. So let me ask you. Do you know what I mean? It's like Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj has done Jab Sahib. You asked me, have I read the Guru Granth Sahib? I asked you. That inside, like for example, the first ten verses, right, of the the prayer of Guru Nanak that you that you recite. Mool Mantra, yeah. Right. How many uh, rhetorical features does it have? You said one per word. No, I didn't. You did. I no, asked. I said about Job Sahib. Okay, the one. Yeah. The, the, Guru Nanak Mool Mantra. It's okay. so deep, bro. Okay, okay, I done Katha. Listen, sir, sir, I did Katha of Mool Mantra two and a half hours, sir, sir. yeah, on you said just this the first. It's going to be a debate, right? Yeah. And you haven't like when well, you have to at least let me make. You have to you have to let me make my point. Okay, make my point. You mentioned the prayer that you're talking about, yeah, forgive yeah. me, I don't remember the name, but the prayer you're talking about, the first 10 verses, you said one verse, so one per word, there is a rhetorical device, right? That was, so that, I said in yeah. 10 words, in 10 words, yeah. there are 10 rhetorical devices. I said impressive, right? But then I gave you the example of the Quran, the smallest chapter, which is also 10 words, has 40. So by, by, just by that fact, the Quran is better. Do you see what I'm saying? No. It's not better, bro. Because, it's because, because the Quran is okay. Done so if, if someone says, so me, if you if you're telling me that a linguistic person yeah. could sit down and write ten words right. with each word having four different meanings, yeah. suddenly you're going to follow that person. Is that all your religion is to you? All someone has to do is make up some uh, po sir, poetry sir. of a different language, and suddenly you're going to start following them because it, it's not about counting sir, sir, rhetorical sir, devices, sir, are you brother. Trying to understand what I'm saying. Of course I am. I'm not. I'm, a, I'm an Oxford graduate in philosophy. Sir, I'm just finding that sir, the, sir. The, le the reasoning okay. is okay. is flawed. Okay, okay. It's if, a flawed if reasoning. If you're an Oxford graduate in philosophy, yes. then respectfully, Which I am. Very respectfully, you should understand a very simple point that I'm trying to make. Right? You've not. You've con you, you've not understood it. Let me repeat it one more time. Yeah. But this time you've got to listen. Right, because okay. if you listen, you understand it. M maybe here it's not the, it's not the deficiency in my listening. Yeah. Maybe it's the maybe fact that the, the only thing you no maybe your maybe, explanation maybe, maybe the I only thing but maybe also that your le reasoning is flawed. Yeah. Well, well, this is why Islam is the fastest growing religion on the earth. And oh, I don't believe in that. If you look at the census, <laughs> atheism is the fastest growing religion in this country. Really? Belief system, atheism is going faster than Islam. Really? Yeah, really? I'd agree with that. I'm, I mean, and we, it's not really about numbers. We had an atheist become Muslim today, but oh. regardless. But I saw, we had a French lady who was very close to accepting Sikhism. But what's that? No, no, What's that about proof? Oh, no, no. You, right? It sounds like you are. No, no, I'm not. No, because, because look, if you cut me up, you've got to let me make my point. Well, so I, I accept it was a deficiency in my explanation, right? Okay. So well, let, let me explain yeah. it again, right? And I apologize for wasting your time up until now for not explaining it properly. But let me explain it again, right? The Quran is saying, create a chapter like it. If you are in doubt that this is from God, yeah. again, let's define philosophically, let's give the philosophical ex uh, definition of what a miracle is. Something that is outside of the productive capacity of human beings yeah. that has no causal or logical connection in terms of the alleged cause yeah. of the event and the event itself, right. right? Let me give an example. Like I said, if I point my finger at him and he splits in half, that would be a miracle, right? Because there is no causal connection between my finger, which is the alleged cause and the event, which is his body splitting in half. You like the philosophical definition? Yeah, like we talked about Guru Tehar Krishna Sahib Ji, okay, yeah? Okay. Tapping Chaju. Okay, okay, right. So, okay. So, so that's an example, right? Okay. Now, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, do, you, do you accept that as, as, an as a definition of miracles, firstly? 
That's a definition of a miracle. There might be more definitions of a miracle. What definitions would they be? Because if you're going to give me David Hume's definition, because I mean, I mean, that 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 in the, that, that definition is flawed because but he's based on induction. Just, just ca carry on with what you're trying to say. No, you you make the point. No, no, because for, for, for me to make my point, it's important that we agree upon a definition. No, but the thing is, me sitting here, I don't spend my time. Yeah. On my personal level, I don't spend my time sitting around trying to work out what definition of miracle is. Right. So the thing is, you grab me here and you say to me, not, do you generic, agree? Yeah, but, but do you agree that this is the definition of a miracle? Yeah. Well, maybe I haven't thought about it right. enough for me to say, yeah, I agree. But on the basis of, let's say, just for the sake of this yeah. argument, because you're trying to make your point. Yeah. Let's say I agree with you. Right. Carry on making your point, because so far, what it sounds like to me you're saying is yeah. that as long as I can get anything in ancient Arabic, because yeah. it has to be in ancient Arabic, yeah. right? With 40 rhetorical devices yeah. in 10 words, yeah. then it becomes better than the Quran. Is that right? Okay. No, well, let, let me make the point. Like, I, I think and then you I would think break your faith no, in your no, religion no, no, and then leave it no, alone. No, no, and no, is no, that no, what you're no, saying? Not, not in the slightest. Don't worry. Yeah. But Don't worry. <laughs> my, my, my faith's not about to break that easily, especially. Look, look here's the point. But then I'm they would worry. prove it to so, you. So, they'd so, pass so, the test, so, and therefore the test has okay, failed. Well, is that right? Well, let me tell you something, isn't it? Because Allah says that they will not be able to pass that test. Allah says that they have not been able to, and they will not be able to, and fear the fire of hell. Right. of which fuel is men and uh, 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 and the fuel of it is men and stones but coming back to my point you do agree upon the definition of a miracle because when you explain to me respectfully the ninth guru i believe where he was approached by the was it the ninth no no the eighth guru seventh yeah. seventh 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 that eighth was guru. by the pandit yeah the pandit right. that was the eighth okay, guru, the eighth guru. guru. so respectfully this guru uh, he performed, according to you, a miracle because he got this random guy who was allegedly mute to explain the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. and he, they, because they, just by him say, tapping him and saying go and explain it, yeah. there's no causal or logical connection between him being the alleged cause and the event, meaning him miraculously explaining yeah, the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, yeah. No, no, so that's actually, why I said for the sake of the argument, right. I'll agree, so but it doesn't do mean that for the sake of the argument, yeah. I haven't really thought about it okay. in deep. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Later okay. on, if you start okay. to say, well, and I might say, well, actually, I don't agree. I think okay. this can also be a okay. miracle. Okay. Then, therefore, sure. I'm just saying sure. that's why I said for the sake of the argument. Argument, carry on, make your point. You have to be a bit skeptical, right? Yeah. Sorry. So well, you've got to be careful that. about definitions. But for, now, but for now, I know, I know, I know. Philosophy is all about definitions, right? So for now, go with that, right? Yeah, and yeah. then perhaps you can reflect upon it later and see yeah, if it sinks in. So that's that's the ground upon which we're walking, right? Now, I am going to explain to you how the Quran fits into this definition. If the Quran fits into this definition, then it will also be a miracle, just like the miracle you mentioned. Okay. But the only difference will be that the Quran is something that you can verify right here, right now, and what you said is something that you can't verify right here, right now. Right? Do you see what I'm saying? What do you mean right here, right now? Why because can't you verify Quran's Pandit Lal Chan? Because we got the history. Here. Yeah, but no, but you, so what? But he's not, he's not here. Yeah, but that's it's irrelevant. It's like saying that no, the whole of what. Well, Tomorrow we might not be in this place. Yeah. We might be in Southall. Yeah. Does that mean the Hounslow ceases to exist? No, but no, no, that, that's that's not the point that I'm no, making. No, but it's not the point. Okay, is so that history you, you happened? Know about yeah. Authentic history testimony. happened, so, right? So, so, so. But you know I mean, about the fact is, testimony. history happened, yeah. Right, right, right. But, but it's but not saying, saying that history didn't happen just because you're saying right, I can't right, see right. it right now in front of me. History ceases to exist. But there's a difference as a philosopher. I'm trying to work out what you're saying. As a philosopher, why is that the objective? You know why? Because I'm going to show you how the Quran is a miracle a priori. And what you're giving me is a posterior, right? Okay. I know you understand okay. that. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay, fantastic. Because you tried so far, I haven't really agreed with you, well, but well, go well, on. Let me I didn't. I didn't know he's an Oxford University graduate <laughs> in philosophy. So well, now, uh, now I'm should be irrelevant. It should be <laughs> no challenge. You get me? <laughs> Look, the point is this, right? That we've defined what a miracle is. Yeah. Right. Now the Quran, if you look at it, it is outside of the productive capacity of human beings. Because I just told you, 40 rhetorical devices in 10 words is right. something that is impossible for anyone to do. No one says, even comes says to who? Us, right? Says who? Says all of history, testimony to. No, you just said to me that's. Right? That's pro a, you said it's all of history. Is it's irrelevant? Is it a priori? No, but you said it's a priori. It has to be self-evident okay, without any history. Okay, that's a very fallacious argument because what you're doing is. But have you studied the Guru Granth Sahib Ji? Have you studied Job right, Sahib or Guru so Gobind Singh Ji in their Bani? So, so let's, let's apply this. Let's apply this test okay. to the Guru Granth Sahib, right? Okay. And then let me give you my deductive okay. a priori argument okay, after that as well. Okay, so let's apply this to the Guru Granth Sahib. Just take. The first 10 words of the Guru Granth Sahib. Okay, Mool Mantan. Let's start with Mool Mantan. Okay. okay, so the first 10 verses, you know them, yeah? Okay, yeah, of course I do. Right, the first 10 verses, not even first 10 words. I'm talking about okay. the f okay. first 10 verses, yeah, go ahead. How many rhetorical devices are in those first 10 verses? Immense. I'd say more than 40. What are you going to do now? Okay, but, 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 but 10 verses is more than 10 words. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's but... 10 no, words. Okay, 10 no, words but, but let's say 10 words is more than 40, then what? But it doesn't. No, but how do you know? Because well, we, we talked about Jab Sahib earlier. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. saying about Jabji Sahib. I believe there's more than 14 Jabji Sahib. Yeah. In Jab fact, the first yeah, word, yeah. I would say, yeah. has about enough meanings to fill about 10, 10 ah, pages. Okay, so this is the misunderstanding. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now, if I have a metaphor, right? For example, 
Give no, for example, okay, 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 okay. Give me an example okay, so of the first word. You said there's 10 words. Just give me one word with the four. Let me give an example. Let me give an example. Now, do you understand slang? I'm sure you understand slang. Yeah, of course I do, bro. Now, if I say, yeah, that, um, if I say to myself, I'm hitting my drum. If I say I'm hitting the drum, yeah? Yeah. That means there's two meanings to that, right? One meaning is that I'm going back to my house. The other one could be that I'm about to get something kicking off, right? Yeah. So there's two different meanings, but that's subjective to, to an extent. You know what? Well, I do understand not, slang, not, but I didn't understand subject. that slang. Okay, okay, but okay. I'll give you the. Okay, maybe I'm. Sorry, I'm like, we, we, come, we come from the roads. Yeah, the road. but it's all right. I, I grew up in South. Okay, or I grew up on okay. the roads, but what I'm saying is I okay. don't understand okay, that. Okay, but okay, say, well, let's say, let's pick something else that we might agree upon. Yeah. Okay. For example. I'm going back yard, or Okay, I'm going back to yard. Yeah, yeah. If I if I if I say, do you know, if I say. You know, there's a if fam say, famous I, I, email out there saying that you know the different means of some expletive. Explet like when I was in, when I was teaching Chi uh, English in China, yeah. we went through ten meanings of the F U C K word. It's yeah. quite a rude word to put in a video, but yeah. point is saying there's many meanings of one word. Yeah. You can use it in okay, different ways. Okay, so is that what you're saying? That's the point. But what I'm saying is, but the, that's not the argument it's I'm not. making. Because you know how you said the Guru Granth Sahib, one word could have four different meanings. Many more, bro. Okay. Many more. That's not the argument I'm making, though. What is your argument? Okay, then? the argument is that within the word. That, that's subjective. I'm talking about the actual rhetorical feature use because if you have one metaphor it could have five six different meanings it could have ten it could have infinite different meanings but it's one rhetorical feature it's one metaphor do you see what I'm saying the metaphor can have 20 infinite different meanings potentially yeah. right but there's only one rhetorical feature right so what I'm saying is you have to find me ten words anywhere inside your text ten words anywhere inside your text yeah. that would provide 40 rhetorical devices and that's it that's the only thing that you need to be a Muslim like to change your religion is that is that it is it is no, the no, extent of your faith okay, okay, so that I just grab you no, 40 no, 40 no, no, but do you know the extent of my faith is such do you know but, the but is that it so do you know the extent of my faith is such respectfully right and forgive me because I am passionate about my religion yeah, well, but we're not sitting here bored with our religion either but and I admire that right but the very next verse Allah says yeah. you have not been able to do that and you will, and not, you will, will not, not be able to do that yeah. fear the fire mm. of which the fuel of it is 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 men and stones, right? So I am. I believe that to such a conviction that you can come and put a knife to my neck and cut my jugular vein right now. Well, you would actually be sending me to paradise. I would. You would be doing me a favor. You know, I, any Muslim from on, anywhere in the street yeah. would love to be a martyr for their religion. Just based on this fact, I believe it so firmly yeah. that you could put a gun to my head and I will never reject it. You see what I'll I'm saying? give you an example. Because, because, because it's not just... It's interesting, it, no, 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 it's no, interesting no, that this is the only no, thing that no, seems no, to be the main no, no, thing no, to you. It's, yeah? not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not. I give you one example. Right. Because it's one that is objectifiable. The Quran has many layers and meanings and depths. But I'm giving you one Bro. rational... So, so as a philosopher, as a philosopher, right? I'm giving you an example, right? And, you, and you're familiar with the axiom that the argument that has not that provides the best explanation right yeah is the argument that is the best, okay. is, is here's, the best here's, here's my response right? to everything you said so Go far for it. okay the response is this right it's very simple Go for it. all you seem to require yeah. is 40 words from guru granth sahib ji that give you 40 rhetorical examples no, ten, 10 words okay you 10 words 10 words 40 no i got it wrong yeah. fair enough but yeah. you know we all make yeah. mistakes yeah. the point is that that's it seems to me yeah. that that is not really yeah. what I would want my religion to be explained by. You know, if this, uh, yeah. I've just given you an example yeah. of a miracle. Yeah. 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 The, the miracle that you wanted to speak about yeah. is the Quran yeah. in the way that no one... But the thing is, I don't spend my time looking for 10 words in Guru Granth Sahib Ji yeah. that could blow your argument away. Right. But if I was to be honest, yeah. I would say they're probably there. 100% yeah. they're there. Yeah. Right? Even Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj when they wrote so in... Blind faith. No, not blind faith. Because I just know how amazing it is. Right, Guru Gobind Singh would write to... But, 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 but that's know. a bit of a... Because what I'm telling you is... But we don't, the, the reason why I stop... The reason why I stop blind faith... Hold, let me finish. Let me finish. The reason... Let me finish, sir. The reason why I wouldn't really bother yeah. trying to find these four, 10 words with yeah. 40 yeah. rhetorical yeah. devices yeah. is because of this. Yeah. We are not trying yeah. to prove the Quran yeah. to be false. Yeah. Because if we did that yeah. and we proved the Quran to be false, yeah. just so that you could, the test that was in the Quran yeah. could be, yeah. that's not our aim. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, it's kind of like me spending my time, yeah, trying to go that way yeah. when I want to go that way. Yeah. What am I trying to do? Yeah. I said to you at the beginning, what is Sikhism about? It's yeah. about finding the divine inside you. Yeah. yeah. Now you tell me one thing: Is there anywhere in the Quran yeah. where it says that you have a dasam dwar? The top of your head is the Godhead, where you can experience the divine. 
Does it say that anywhere in the Quran no, or do you believe that yourself no, that no, it's no. true? No, no, what we believe... Well, I'm not, just ask the question, yes or no? Do no, you, no is no, there no. anywhere that talks about a divine on the top of the head and you can experience the divine? No, it doesn't, does but that's it, irrelevant to our creed. Okay, fine. Because we does have it, a, a, okay. our, our spirituality with God it's is, is no, but different. Ask the question, you said hearts. no. Now, do, is there anything in your religion that says that um, you can hear divine music at the highest experience when you get to the divine, you can experience music? When we get to paradise, yeah? No, but here. No, no, no. No, it's okay. Not All right. Is there anything in your religion that says that reincarnation, the idea of uh, of op extra life karma, previous karma? No, 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 no. no, no, no. We See, don't believe that. For me, that's enough to say your religion is not true for me. Right. But I thought as Sikhs, you don't disprove our religions. No, we're not trying to prove your religion right or wrong, but because the test you gave you was about the four, ten yeah, words yeah, and yeah, forty. Yeah. We're not interested. Yeah, yeah but everything because, you just said. Because because so, everything so, I've just told you, those three things are evident to me. So I don't mean to insult you, right? And See, I don't. But it's because. Do you see what I mean? What I told you earlier, because Guru Sahib is talking such divine truths, and you feel the bliss yeah. of what they're saying and they yeah. talk about Naam, yeah. they talk about the divine, they talk yeah. about the people. It's the Wait, truth okay, is it, okay. it is the truth. So I don't need like so no one else so has it. So here's the you point see what I mean? Here, it's not some kind of a priori okay. proof. Sikhi was never designed to prove right. it to some random right. person walking past right. grab him and say, yo bro, yeah, yeah. look at these ten words. Yeah. Nothing like it in yeah. the world. That's it. Become yeah. Muslim, yeah. say the Shahada yeah. and then God bless you're gonna go to heaven. Right. That's not what Sikhi is okay, about. Sikhi is so. about finding God inside you. And you're not gonna find it with these ten words just because you you found out that it's rhetorically got forty metaphors and suddenly you're gonna no, bro. Okay. It's about finding God inside you. Okay, but so here's the thing, right? Like I told you, it's like a pointless argument. No, 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 this because you're trying so, to prove so, me so, something, so, so, so. which is never going to work because I know that God's up here. I can feel Him. Okay. So the whole point that God, the thing won't work because I can. But, but, and many people like me out there yeah. have experienced the divine yeah. by saying God's name, and so we will never accept the Quran for that reason because yeah. it doesn't talk about the Sundar. Okay, but here's the thing. Ma so. Ram Rahim Quran Quran. Look at the word. Yeah, listen to it carefully. <coughs> Ram, Rahim, Ram Hindu. Rahim Arabic Puran Puranas, the Hindus, yeah? Quran yeah. Arabic, yeah? yeah? And they say hey? They say many things But yeah. ek na manu yeah. I won't even accept anything He doesn't say he's criticizing yeah. What he's saying is yeah. I don't need those yeah. Because the truth is there Evident in Guru's writings yeah. That we can experience the divine Yeah, yeah? Okay. And that's why Guru Dev Ji When he went to Baghdad mm -hmm. They made a big pillar for him mm -hmm. They said Nanak Shah Fakir yeah. Hindu ka Guru Musliman ka Peer Okay. So here's, because here's, here's he, as far as he's make. concerned, he's yeah. Jagat Guru. The truth he's telling yeah. is self-evident because you can experience it. It's not some numbers. I ain't got to go and count ten words in Guru Granth Sahib yeah. to prove you wrong. Yeah. The truth is there, and you don't. You just said to me that there's no, it isn't in the Quran. Sir, sir, here's, 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 here's just the point that I want to make to you, right? And and this is the point. And forgive me because it, we do have to make a move because I have a lesson. That yeah, I and I've got to go. To but I do go. appreciate but, all of you guys giving me your time. But the point that I want to make is that firstly, when you said that. Uh, you know, I, we don't believe that this is the part that's connected to God. We don't believe in reincarnation, so on and so forth. And you said that that is enough for you to say that my religion... Sorry, sorry, I apologize. That is enough. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, it's all right, bro. Forgive that me. is enough for you to say that our religion is wrong? No, no. I said that enough. because I would not okay. follow it. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's it's not that's wrong. Okay, there's a lot of truth. Okay. Remember I said earlier, there's a lot of truth within it. Know, no, However, it wouldn't be the religion that I would sorry, choose. Let me, let me make the whole point. The point is this, yeah, that... Okay, I hear what you're saying, yeah. but the points I have given you, mm. the point I have given you, and the reason why I gave you this one okay. point, yeah. is because it's verifiable. Okay, here's a question. No, 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 I, sir, okay, I, you sir, did, you, you sir, gave I have to finish, sir, okay, I have to finish, right? The point I gave you is verifiable, everything you gave me is not verifiable. Is verifiable. No, 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 hear me, hear me out, hear go me out. On. Respectfully, right, I told you, I gave you one example, and I've stuck to this example because it's not enough for you to say, this is a fallacious argument. But oh, you no, no, you no, control no, no, the whole argument so far, but go on. No, but sir, I'm sure, when you play back the footage, you see you've been speaking most of the no, way. No, it's not that, right? but you've done, no, 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 it's not true. No, no, you've been no, no, speaking a fair no, no. bit, bro. Go okay, on. well, I am an extra, but I like to talk, right? The point is this, yeah? That it's a fallacious argument for you to say that, hold up, this is all your faith is based upon because you believe in 10 words. Because the point is that those 10 words are actually proof to the fact that the Quran is a miracle. And I, and I gave you and I gave you 10, I gave you 10 words, not even the whole Quran. Imagine that these that the Quran is so powerful that we are not even able to dive in to the next part because I have to try and explain to you just what these 10 words mean. But regardless, that's neither here nor there. I really do value your time and I appreciate this. Just one thing that I wanted to respectfully leave you all with is that I know from history, right? And that there have been some atrocities that the Sikhs have suffered at the hands of the Muslims, right? And to be honest, when I heard this, right? And when I hear the stories, it actually, once it almost brought tears to my eyes. And I'm, I'm, 
you like you, you 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 can tell the camera off. You can tell the camera off. Why did it actually bring tears to your eyes? It's just an interesting point that you said they almost. Do you know? Do you know why? Because what happened was very sad. Yeah, and I just want you guys to know that if you refer back to our scripture, right? Nothing in our scripture teaches this, right? Nothing in our scripture teaches. No matter what you've been told. Sorry, they 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 can't. Sorry, they're recording. They're recording. Yeah. What kind of is before? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing in our scripture teaches this or tells people to do this. If people did interpret the scripture in their own, because I don't know what inspired or motivated these people. Bro, we already know this. We already know this. That's why we're not against Islam. Right. And the I thing is that, that the reason we're not ag like that's the reason the reason why the sixth guru yeah. made a mosque is yeah. we're not against Islam. Right. That's not the point. And I can see that. Yeah, because of the that. fact that we appreciate that actually yeah. there is no religion. Yeah. yeah. There is no religion. Right. There's bad people right. and there's good people. The, 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 and all we care about yeah. is that good people yeah. want to hang out with them and bad people yeah. we're gonna be involved in being against them. Yeah. So, so we don't really care about religion, man. You know what I mean? We got no we got nothing against any religion. Honestly man, thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. Ask, you know, sure. obviously, we as Sikhs out here, we got a, we. There's a lot of questions that we have about. We have a lot of questions about Islam, but you know, we make videos about this kind of stuff yeah. on YouTube. Uh -huh. The thing is that you know, you brought, you kept sticking to this one rhetorical thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, for a Sikh, it's kind of it's like an irrelevant argument. We never try and go out there and get people to prove God. That's not our concern. Yeah. If you speak us today, we talk to so many people. Yeah. Never once did we say, "I'm going to give you some proof about God." Yeah. But just to just talk about that one word, yeah, the ikko and kar, yeah, the one, the very first word. Yeah. It's so deep that sometimes it takes us about an hour yeah. just to explain maybe ten, a tenth of the meaning of the ikko and kar, yeah. which is why, and the, the, which is why that we don't really um, in, engage in these kinds of things. Yeah. What a Sikh is interested is in the spiritual growth, yeah, yeah. and really. From an Islamic point of view, we're not really interested in converting Muslims to Sikhism. Like when I met Muslims today, mm -hmm. what I would say to them is meditate. Yeah. Say the 99 names of Allah. Yeah? <coughs> yeah. Use the tasbih as yeah. you call it. Yeah? yeah, You call it Amala, you call it tasbih. Mm -hmm. Say the names of God. Yeah. Can we a Christian, we say, look, say the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. We're not here to convert people to Sikhism because we think this is the only way to God. Yeah. We're here to, ex to tell people, yeah. connect to your divine. Yeah. So the message I will leave you and yeah. the Islamic faith with yeah. is that this life is far too valuable yeah. to spend it in having these kinds of random debates. Yeah. The most valuable thing a person can do mm -hmm. is what you said at one point, is wake up in the morning, yeah, yeah kick off those sheets, mm -hmm. forget what's around you, mm -hmm. forget the dunya for a little while, yeah, and do your sifa salah yeah. of the Creator. Yeah. And, that, and that experience of the Divine yeah. is what life is about. And the rest of it yeah. is all a mirage, it's a show, it's the dunya. It's not right, right, important. Right. Just, just, and that's the message I would have for the Islamic just, faith is Mara says yeah. to the Mullah, for example, there's a word of Gunadeji Mara, finish off with that Mara. Mara says, Marna Mullah Marna Pi Kartaro Darna. What that means is, hey Mullah, you're going to die one day, yeah. so be very afraid yeah. because you're going to get judged. Yeah. And if you go out in the world and start and be so harsh, be no compassion, don't say God's name, yeah. and yet you're out there trying to convert people, yeah. trying to be uh, so forceful and, you know, actually no, twist. Um, not you, my friend, yeah. not you. Okay. The, at the moment, yeah. there's a lot of, like you said earlier, there's a lot of people that have done this kind yeah. of stuff, yeah? yeah, in the past. And even now, mm -hmm. there are Muslims that are doing acts that we would call ertaram, unrighteous. Mm -hmm. Those people better be scared because the divine yeah. will judge them. Yeah. That's yeah, our so, message, so yeah. Just on that point, um, firstly, like I said to you, it's the reason, like, you know, you know what we said about the word ik onka, spending one hour, spending one tenth of it? Like, I, I went to a class where the teacher, you know, have you heard the term alhamdulillah? You must have heard Muslims yeah, say alhamdulillah. Have, yeah. Just that one term, right? Spending two and a half hours and he didn't even finish the explanation of it by any means. So like that's even that's back how deep God's but, but, story, but, but, isn't but then, it? You know, but when it, when it when it comes down to us coming out here trying to convert people, like I said, we don't try and convert people. We pass the message yeah. because it's an obligation. Do you know why? You know what you said about being scared. That's very relevant because sincerely, as a fellow human being, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him told us, mm -hmm. right, that none of you truly believe until, until you. you love for your brother, but you love for yourself. Because we are so convicted, we have so much conviction, sorry, that our religion is the truth. Not religion, our way of life is the truth. That the word, the Quran is the word of Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I respect the Islamic, I respect that idea of trying to give the truth to other people. This is why we're out here, because I know the reality, and I don't mean this as a respect, but as a disrespect, but come on, you already know what my belief is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That if you're not a Muslim, 
and you rejected the faith after it was given to you, you're going to burn in the hell fire. Yeah, Not yeah. you, anyone, right? No, we're totally and, against and, that. And, and that's why we totally we're here. disagree. But sir, yeah. but sir, that's why we're here yeah. because we care. Yeah, it's, because it's you not, care. It's not like yeah, we get a enough. paycheck. No, no, right? I agree with you. Because we care. Yeah, right? but that belief itself is false. Yeah. I really. You know what I mean? We don't believe in that. That belief is based on the. Yeah, yeah, no, it's on the intellectual argument I gave you. Not always. Not always. But thank you. All right, bro. Thank you.